This is Eric Mitchell. I'm the assistant principal here at Heartland and the coordinator for our STEM camp this week. Science, technology, um, some people add in the, an A in there for, for art, makes it STEAM, um, but you've got you know, mechanics in there and math um, as well. So you're kind of getting a, a, a lot of every, it's very holistic, you get a lot of every world there with um, you know, the artistic side of things, mathematical side, science, technology, etc. So um, again, uh, for our uh, group this week, we're, we're, that's kind of transitioning into a lot of project-based learning activities, group activities, things of that nature. For us, what our interpretation of the camp would mean is, you know, sometimes you hear the word summer school and it kind of has a negative connotation to it, so we're kind of steering away from that. Um, and I think the purpose of the camp then is to try to provide an enriching ex experience, but also one that is uh, fun and positive as well. So, like I said, um, this is uh, kind of an experience for our kids here and the ones that are visiting from GC Burkhead and Lincoln Trail to uh, engage in a lot of activities um, where, yeah, they are learning about collaborating with one another. Um, they're learning uh, things like math and science and, and technology, but they're doing so in a way that is um, more collaborative and, and maybe much uh, more fun than your traditional idea of what a summer school might look like. One of the benefits at our school at Heartland is that we actually have a STEM class. So um, with our rotation um, once a week, um, or excuse me, once, once a month, uh, the kids would go to uh, a STEM class. Um, so that's one, th one of the benefits we have. And I know a lot of other places have STEM classes within their curriculum as well. Um, but this process was an enrollment process. So we had um, you know, multiple up to 50, 60 kids that we reached out to um, to, to attend. And then um, we've had close to that number um, that have been coming the, these past few days. They'll have a, a similar but probably different experience, obviously at Lincoln Trail. And then I think the third week they're going to GC Burkhead. So, um, basically, we're all hosting. It, if you wanted to, you could sign up for all three weeks. Um, some uh, have signed up for one or two. Um, some have signed up for all of them. Um, but again, the, the focus is STEM, uh, regardless of where uh, you end up at um, or which camp you attend. Uh, it's just whoever's hosting it is a little bit different. And again, they may have a different set of things that they are doing. They may not be following the exact curriculum that we are or the activities that we are doing. And to a certain degree, we hope they're not. We hope that they're having a, you know, an innovative and a, a creative time uh, there as well. Um, because again, it's a very, like I said earlier, holistic process. So there's a lot of things that you can incorporate uh, and draw in there. So there's, there's a lot of room for creativity and different activities. I am Jacqueline Clark. I am the STEM lab teacher here at Heartland Elementary. And this was my first year actually teaching STEM lab, but I've been teaching science for a number of years for different grade levels. And I was able to do the STEM lab camp this year. And basically STEM just stands for science, technology, technology, engineering, and math. And you just combine all of those elements into that class. So for the STEM lab camp this week, we wanted to focus on physical science and just learning all of the terminology, force motion, inertia, all of those terms that go with physical science. And then we created a lot of projects for them to build that help them practice those terms. On Monday, we actually built roller coasters and they had to learn gravitational force and how to build the fastest roller coaster. They had a great time doing that. And on Tuesday, we actually did water slides, which similar to the roller coasters, but then you added the element of water, and they also had to have some twists and turns involved in that. So that was a learning process, as well as properties and materials, because they had to, of course, waterproof it. On Wednesday, we built trampolines. We went a totally different direction, just using, again, the properties of materials. They could use material, they could use felt, they could use rubber to create their trampolines, and Whichever trampoline had the highest bounce with the marble dropped on it, that was the one that won. 
And then yesterday we started the project that we finished today, and that was creating a putt-putt golf course. And each group of three students had to create a hole that they could then create as many obstacles as they wanted on there. They had to at least have a minimum of four with a starting point and an ending point where their hole would be. And they had free reign of what materials that they wanted to use and how they wanted to design it. The only thing that all of them really had in common was that it was the same length of board, cardboard, and that they had to have that starting and ending point. So they spent about two hours yesterday actually planning it, designing it, building it, testing it out yesterday. And then today we actually got to play the finished product. So all the groups put their holes together. We had a five hole mini golf course that we set up in our courtyard. And they also had to make putters today. So they made the putters out of uh, paper towel tubes and popsicle sticks and some tape and then all of the students got to play through their golf course. So basically the reason that we did all of these projects is for the students to understand that even though all of these things are fun and they're activities that you maybe do in the summer, like going to an amusement park, a water park, or playing puppet golf, all of those things have scientific principles involved with physical science and that this could be something that they choose to do as they get older, building those roller coasters, being those engineers who actually construct a putt-putt golf course, for instance. So it just opened their eyes to a lot of different avenues that they could go when they go into college, when they get older, just some different career paths, as well as learning all of the science content, too. Just like a putt-putt course, this is going to be hole number one. This will be hole number two, then we're going to kind of curve over here. Hole number three, hole number four, hole number five. This is actually the final product of what we've been working on since yesterday. And this whole entire week we've been working on physical science, so force and motion. And we decided to go ahead and let them make a putt-putt course and each group of three was able to create a one hole for our putt-putt course and they're learning how to create obstacles but not make it too difficult so that they can actually hit the ball into the hole so they had their choice of materials they had their choice of how they wanted to lay it out and then they also had to make their putters this morning before we came out here so now we're actually just playing our course they, um, they were only given a few restrictions. Each board is the same length, and they had to have a starting point, of course, and an end point where the hole would be. And then they were able to use the materials that they chose to do and design it the way that they wanted to. Uh, they've actually really loved it. It's been really good. And I think that was kind of a surprise say that they got to make their own putters because they're excited they even want to take them home. Everybody gets their own. I actually, I like that first obstacle of yours because you can still do it like that, but it gives it just a little bit of more difficulty on it. Hi, I'm Matt Murray. I'm a fifth grade teacher here at Heartland Elementary. I, I chose to work this STEM camp this week to show these kids how science, technology, engineering, and mathematics can all combine to the natural problem solving skills that they already have. Uh, they, they learned that through projects like making their own mini golf hole this week where they had, some, they had to create some obstacles so they had to think ahead about what would make it more difficult. Uh, one of the other 
projects that we did is that they had to um, create a balloon car. So they had to figure out how to run a straw through a balloon car to get the air to, to run through the car to actually push the car forward with the air going the opposite direction. So they, through all those activities that we did, we hope that they were able to take home some, the idea that they already have these natural problem solving skills and that they can combine them with science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to make it work. Yeah, I made it. Yes, I got in three. Heartland hosted the first week and Lincoln Trail is going to host the second week and then GC Burkhead will actually host the third week of the camp. The kids can sign up to go for one week at their home school or if they want to do all three weeks they can do that too or they can do two of the three weeks. It's really up to them, whatever they want to do. A flyer went home towards the end of the school year allowing the parents to sign their kids up. Any child that was interested in doing it was welcome to come.